What's up, y'all? It's me here, No Joe Cow. We're coming at you, motherfuckers, live from Phnom Penh, Cambodia, the heart of Southeast Asia. What's going on, everybody? Thanks, thanks for tuning in. I really, sincerely appreciate this. Your, your, your viewership of my channel on YouTube. Thanks. <laughs> Would you guys watch my channel if I talk like that all the time? Like a fucking Poindexter. We'll get over here. We got, we got some boys playing. Uh, is this some kind of soccer? Got a guy over there. Got a got a dwarf over there. Got a got a little person over there. Got a little guy, little person. Yeah, so I just got this email from this guy named Edwin Torres. I'm not really gonna read it, but I'm just gonna kind of paraphrase. He was saying like, uh, "Hey man, I was in Phnom Penh for like a couple weeks or whatever." He said, and I he 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 said that he saw me. He said that he saw me here, but he didn't want to look crazy coming up to me and approaching me. Guys, as I've said a hundred fucking times, look, man. There's nothing crazy about wanting to say hello to somebody that you admire. Listen, if you like my videos and you come here to Phnom Penh and you see me out and I'm and I'm one of the reasons that you all came to Phnom Penh in the first place, then like, you know, if you want to say hi to me, then come up and say, "Hey man, what's up? I like your channel. I like your videos. They they help me out or just like whatever you want to say to me." Obviously, if you're going to come up and be a dick to me, then it's it's not going to go too well for you, but if you come up and you're respectful to me, then why the fuck would I have a, like, why, <laughs> why the fuck would I have a problem with that, man? So, by all means, come up and say hi. Now, that's no guarantee that I'm going to give you lots of my time. Like, if I'm fucking busy and I got shit to do, then I'm going to go about it. But I'm not going to be rude and blow you off, man. I'm, I'm not, I'm sorry, but I'm just, I'm just not like that, um, despite what some of you may or may, uh, may or may not think about me. So, now, now, look, guys, if you have, like, a fucked up stutter, like, hey, I, 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 I. I like your ch 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 channel, then don't fucking talk to me. Like, for sure, for sure don't talk to me. Just keep on walking. If you see me right here, you see me, just keep on walking, man. Don't fucking talk to me. If you got one of those big-ass neck tumors, dude, do n I don't care how much I inspired you. Do not come up to me. I'll throw up. Go fuck yourself. You got Y'all got a problem with it, man. Um... Shit, let me get my phone out here. Let me get my email out. I seriously do appreciate all my fans, though, man. Like, like, like when I first started this channel, guys, like I, pff, I knew that it was gonna be unique, and I knew that it was gonna be something different. But I didn't expect to inspire these people all over the planet, man. Like, like, like I, like I really am grateful for that, guys. So don't, don't ever think that I don't appreciate my fans. Don't ever think that I don't appreciate an email that's that's constructive. Got an email here from. Uh, well, if my fucking phone would load. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Steve Bland. Thanks, Steve Bland. Now, this was sent to me a little while ago. Biggest Fear by Steve Bland. Even though his... Dude, you're fucking with This is not your real name, dude. If you, think, you think I'm stupid, huh? Hey, man. Big fan of the videos. I know you may have a big dick and little balls, so what was your biggest fear going overseas? Keep up the good work. Sincerely, Ray Charles. All right, so Steve Bland is Ray Charles. Ray Charles is Steve Bland. All right, man. Very, very fucking funny, dude. Very, very funny, man. He said, um, what was my biggest fear going overseas? Well, good question. Good question. Um, let's back up here a bit. Let's back up here. So why did I come overseas? Well, now, a lot of people who watch my channel who, who are, or who have been following me for a while now... By the way, guys, so, sorry about the nasal, the nasally voice here. I'm a little bit, a little stuffed up, man. It's my, it's my, my AIDS is acting up again. So, sorry, guys. Um, biggest fear coming overseas. I mean, like, like when I, when I came here, the, the biggest stress I had was all the doubters. Was, was, was everybody telling me that I'm gonna fail, um, including my own fucking family, including my own mother that currently lives here in Phnom Penh. You know, I mean, so it's, it's fucking crazy, man. Listen, my biggest fear before I came was I was starting to kind of let other people's doubt, their doubt of me, their doubt of my greatness, get in the way, cloud, cloud my judgment, cloud my vision, so to speak. Also, one of my biggest fears was simply just coming out here and just, yeah, I mean, failing. So I guess, I guess my biggest fear wasn't actually it wasn't so much coming out here and failing it was coming it, it, my my biggest fear as i always say is is 
is like regretting what I uh, did do. Uh, um, God damn it, I fucked it up again. I always fuck this up when I try to say it, dude. Shit. I would rather regret the things I did than the things I did not. Does that make sense? God damn it, I'm a fucking retard, y'all. God, why do, you, why do you guys even watch my channel, dude? For real. Why the fuck do y'all watch my channel, man? Listen to me talk shit and stutter and fucking spit on myself. Like an idiot. Anyways. Yes, my biggest fear was coming out here and basically not going 100%, not going full throttle, not not living up to my potential. Want to say hi? Say hello? Say hi? Yes, you're famous now. You're famous. <laughs> yeah, so... Was coming out here and, like, not giving... Like, like not trying it out. And, and, and as I've told, told several people, like, I think my fourth or fifth day here in Cambodia, my fourth or fifth day here, or, or, or night rather, I was laying in my bed at Homeland Guest House Street 304. Fantastic guest house for you to get started in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, everybody. <laughs> I was laying there and I was like, man, dude, I'm not going to have enough money to fucking live. If I do this teacher's program, because I was going to do this, this is LC Asia TEFL course, it was like 30 days, it was like 1500 bucks or whatever bullshit it was. And I was like, man, if I spend this amount of money that I'm not going to have a job in time enough to, to you know, to, to make any money or whatever, like I'm going to be fucking broke, I'm going to be living on the street, I'm going to be fucked, my whole life is fucked up, oh my god, <laughs> you know, I was just like stressing myself out, like fucking kill myself now, Ugh. So I emailed my mom the next morning, I was like, mom, I'm fucking depressed, I'm thinking about killing myself, like I think I fucked my life up, I don't know what the hell to do. And I was doubting myself, man. I was totally doubting myself, dude. It was like my fourth or fifth day here. I'm like, what the fuck have I done with my life? And uh, so I went to the, so I actually rushed. I rushed myself via tuk-tuk to the airport. Holy shit, that's the first guy I've ever seen with a cat on a leash. He has a cat on a leash. Hello. He's like, he's like, man, what the fuck are you filming me for, dude? I just, I, I just had to get that shit. Yeah, so I went to the airport, man. And uh, I bought my return ticket back to Washington, Washington D.C. to Dulles Airport. And then I went back and I was kind of like relieved. I was like, oh, OK, I'm going to go back home. I have a little bit of money and I'm going to figure it out when I get back. And I and dude, I had no idea what I was going to do when I got back home. I was already as soon as I bought the ticket, I'm like stressing out about what I'm going to do back home now. I'm like, fuck, I'm going to have to go back to Food Max. And Food, Food Max was like this discount grocery store. Like a, it was like a Latin caribbean grocery store but they had like discount shit and i would always go there and um i know that guy do i know that dude he looks dude, he looks familiar um yeah and i was like fuck i'm gonna have to buy white rice and fucking pork fat and eat just eat just eat all that shit over there and uh so man i was it was it was a fucking train wreck dude so i then i go to the killing fields that day I go to Chong Ike, Chong Ike, which is like the, 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 the main killing fields that, that they'll take you to. And I went to that and I did that. And then I learned a bit about that, the history of the Khmer Rouge, the history of Cambodia. Definitely crazy to go to the killing fields. De definitely an interesting experience. I would suggest anybody go there. I know it's a tourist thing, but man, the difference of the killing fields and the Holocaust Museum in D.C. is that the Holocaust Museum is all indoors and everything's behind air conditioned glass cases but when you go to the fucking killing fields you're under the sun you can feel the the earth under your feet you 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 can smell the trees you know you you can feel the elements that these people in, in the Khmer Rouge actually experience whereas if you go to the Holocaust Museum you just see a bunch of fucking Jews on a picture yeah I said it yeah I said it Jews y'all don't own the fucking Holocaust man there was a Holocaust here in Cambodia all right fuck you yeah I said it Tired of the Jews. Well, you can't say Holocaust. Uh, it's sensitive. Boo boo bee boo. Go fuck yourself. Ah, yeah, it's fucked up what happened to the Jews. Yeah, I'm getting way the hell off track. Go fuck yourself if you don't like it. Turn the damn channel, man. It's not my fucking boss, dude. Um, yeah, so anyway, so what I did that night is I got really fucking high. I got super fucking baked. I mean, dude, so baked so baked that my mouth I actually to open my mouth from all the all the intense dryness in there I actually had to like pry my mouth open that's no joke I'm dead serious my eyes look like little cherries and I was laying in my bed high as fuck paranoid as fuck and I couldn't sleep and I'm like you know what dude if I go back to Virginia man if I if I go back home holy shit 
dude, I'm going to lose all respect for myself. And I started thinking about all the possible opportunity that I would have here in Cambodia. And, 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 and I started to remind myself why I came here. I came here originally because I wanted to try to work for myself. I, and I wanted to compete professionally in kickboxing. I, I wanted to come out here and train with the Kamai people. I wanted to whoop some ass. And, and, and obviously, I wanted to take my fighting career a bit further than it went. I, obviously, like I wanted to become champion, and, I, and I, I wanted to be a little more well-known for that. And I'm not, but it's okay. Like, like I'm at peace with that. My, my battery's running low. Well, I'm just checking the, the time here. I'm, I'm at peace with the fact that I never became a champion or that, that I never had like a, a big record in kickboxing. You know, that's, that, that's all due to my broken hand. But uh, I'm still undefeated and, and, and I am a coach now and I did still achieve my dreams. And I would have never done that if I would have moved back to America. I would have never met a beautiful woman that's now my, that's now my amazing girlfriend that I love so much. Had I moved back to Cambodia, I, dude, I, I, man, I've had so many life-changing experiences out here, and and none of that would have happened if 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 I would have given into my fear and my self-doubt going back to the states, man. So what did I do? I stayed up all night thinking, you know what? I'm gonna stay here and make it work. And I pray to God, I pray to Allah, I pray to whoever the fuck is listening that I can go back to the airport and get a refund. Well, thankfully, I did get a refund. That was a huge help. I got I got all my money back. Thank God. Fuck. That would have that would have fuck, been fucked up, man, if I couldn't. But it, but it would have totally been my fault. Anyway, so I so I ended up staying here, and then and then the next few days I went to see him reap, and I came back to Phnom Penh. I started teaching English, and blah, 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 and then you know now I'm fucking here, guys. So the the moral of the story is, um, I mean like as cheesy as it sounds, yeah, like face your fucking fears, dude. Um, I, I make a lot of videos like this where I tell people to not listen to doubters and I do this for a reason I know I know some people get tired of me. Oh, oh we're talking about the same thing man. You're like your videos get repetitive or whatever, but like dude Man, I'm trying to drill it in your fucking head dude. Never doubt yourself man if you want to move to Afghanistan and sell apples as shitty of an idea as that may be as shitty of an idea as that as that for sure is as that definitely is Man, if, if you feel it and that, that thought gives you goosebumps and that, and that thought puts a smile on your face, dude, do it. Life is too short. And I know it's easy to just say do it. But guys, there's always a process. There's always a process. There's, there's, a, there, there's a procedure that needs to be taken uh, uh, to make certain things happen. Like if your goal is to move abroad within the next six months, you know how much money that you need to take with you. So that's what you got to save. If you got to stop drinking beer all the time, if you got to, you got to lay off the fucking Krispy Kremes, I don't know, you got to, you got to not uh, buy so much weed or, or just cut your costs, man. And just, and just know that this is going towards something that's going to ultimately make you very happy in life. Yeah, you might, you might have to have some discipline and, and sacrifice a little bit of comfort and fun time, just like I did, you know, like to, like to make it out here, man, I, I had to work a lot and save a lot. And there were a lot of days where I wanted to go out and sp spend money because I was bored or because I was depressed. Or I, was, I wasn't happy. And I wanted to buy some shit to make me feel good. And I didn't. And I didn't. And I knew that it was a terrible idea because I would never be able to achieve my dreams. And then, and then I would lay old in my bed regretting what I did not instead of, uh, pardon me, regretting what I did not. Yeah. Yeah, I always fucked that up. So I guess that's my biggest fear, man. At the end of the day is... is is regretting what I did not do you know like there's there, there's definitely things that I do regret that I did do but there's things that I didn't there, there, there are some things in my life that I did not do that I'd be very curious to like go back in time and see what would have happened had I not done it or had I done it god damn it Jesus so so good I'm not an English teacher guys so good I'm not an English teacher anyways y'all hit me up no joke striking at gmail.com if you guys want to give me some video ideas if you all want to hit me up for personal training information here in Phnom Penh, if you guys are interested in travel consulting, I do that. I can help you get acclimated to life here in Phnom Penh, and I give you peace of mind. I answer any and all questions you would have, and I have other people on my side, on my team, that'll for sure help you with anything that you want. So if you guys are interested in setting up an appointment or a meeting, Hit me up at nojokestriking at gmail.com. And yes, I do have a price. If you're interested and you want to know the price, like I said, hit me up. My Instagram is 
at Brayton Like Satan in my Facebook, y'all. Please like and share my page, facebook.com slash no joke Howard. Guys, never listen to the doubters, man. Always listen to yourself. It's easier said than done, but always listen to yourself, man. Dude, do not be the person to regret what you uh, did not do, man. There's nothing worse than that. That's my biggest fucking fear, guys. All right? Steve Blaine, I appreciate the email. Whatever the hell your name is, Ray Charles. Peace.